Hey guys, it's Derek here. So 2023 has finished and now we are going into 2024, which means more pre-orders to go through and uh, I might also be slowing down just a little bit this year and I'll kind of explain why when we go through each month, but let's get into it. Starting us off in January, I have a Nendoroid from Rikirus Recoil, and that is the Kurumi. At least I think I said it right. Basically, this is going to help us complete the set, and that's very, very important to me. She is going to be wearing her hoodie, and she has that mischievous face, also some blank stares, and of course, the, I believe it was like a VR headset of sorts. So she has all that going on for her, and I think this is going to be a very cute addition to the collection. And I picked this one up off of Nin Nin Game. I've picked up almost everything off of Nin Nin Game, just to kind of stream Streamline things this year. That's the first thing we're adding to the collection. Next up, we have a very cute witch scale figure of Elena. Elena? Elena. Elena. This is going to be a 1 7 scale, and I picked this one up off of Good Smile Company Global. So we got that very inexpensive shipping there, and that is a very good bonus. As for the figure herself, she's very cute and playful. She's on her broom. You do get the sheets of the book that she's going to be reading, and also a bit of uh, clouds going on. This should be a fairly good quality one as well, so I'm very, very happy to add this to the collection. I originally also had the Good Smile Company version also on pre-order, but then I kind of thought probably should just stick with one, and this one ended up being the better of the two. Moving over to February, it's gonna be my most jam-packed month of the year, and basically I, I'm not gonna go anywhere this month. I'm just gonna be eating cup noodles at home, trying to get through it. Starting us off, we have a Chisato from Good Smile Company. Been waiting for this one for quite a while because this is the scale, one seven scale version, and she's 12,956 yen, making it incredibly affordable. There's also a Takina, but that's later on, so we'll, we'll cover her in a little bit. Another Good Smile Company scale for this month is a Yor and Anya combo, and this is another 1-7 scale. There's also a little ottoman that they're sitting on, and I don't believe that the carpet that is in the promo image is, is included, but that would be a cool additional bonus. Given the popularity of Spy Family, I think this is a good pickup as well, and I'm really excited to add this to the collection. Of course, we still need a scale Bond and Lloyd to kind of finish up this set, so hopefully in the future they add those two as well and we can kind of get the entire family in scale form to you know, round things up. Moving over to some more Nendoroid goodies, I have a Yami Yugi on order. He's going to be a perfect companion for the Dark Magician girl I picked up a little while back, and also the Maji Arps one, so I think it's a perfect timing for that. It is a re-release, and the original came out a little bit earlier. I think it was 2019. I got this one for a little over 4,000 yen, although I think on the website it has increased like just a little bit. I also picked up Akita from Bochi the Rock, and this one here I think is, it's, yeah, it's, it's feeding into my bad habit of collecting sets. With Nendoroids, it's a lot easier to complete a full set, so yeah, that's another another Nendo in the in the giant collection because I have that problem. Yeah, that's basically where the affordability for February ends because I also picked up another quarter scale freeing bunny. I mean, I mean, like, she's technically a bunny, but she's she's Miracle from My Hero Academia, a literal bunny girl. This time, I think uh, it's a very justifiable purchase. She is a very beautiful muscle mommy, and ever since she was announced, I have had my eye on her. I've kind of did the math and figured out that getting her off of Ninning Game made the most sense, even though the the overall price is a little bit more than some other sites. I just had so many items picked up from here that the loyalty points have piled up. It made sense for me. Following her up, I also picked up another bunny girl, and this is the highly anticipated Kitakawa Madden bunny. Also from Freeing, also quarter scale, and also incredibly expensive. This is 39,600 Japanese yen. This one though, I'm not entirely sure if I want to keep whenever she does come in. I may not actually open it and maybe try to sell it because... I... Yeah, I don't know. I think I think FOMO got to me. I placed my order, and if any of you have ordered off of the Good Smell Company global website, they clearly state that you can't cancel anything. Yeah, I know. This is definitely this is this is a mistake. And to finish off the month, I do have a REM on order. This is the FNEX. Uh, how do you pronounce this? The Haikya Yak Yaku version. Demon version. She's sitting down. There's a lot of intricate paintwork on this, and this is incredibly expensive for a one seven scale. This is. 36,190 yen. You guys know how much I love Rem. This is a 
beautiful figure. It plays on the Oni aspects as well. This is creeping up in the East Stream territory in terms of price. There have been a lot of figures from FNX that have tanked and binned in the past, so a part of me kind of wants to play off that. Moving over to the month of March though, I did finally bite the bullet and pick up another Chisato. Originally I wasn't going to pick this one up, but the more I looked at it, the more I wanted to complete the set. I ended up getting the Aniplex version of her wearing the cafe outfit. This is very adorable. Good facial expression, cute expression with the peace sign. She's also holding up a parfait, I believe. The only thing I'm a little worried about is the shading and potentially if she will lean, because in all the other promotional images and everything else, there's no support stand. So a little worried there. But of course I also got the Takina, but that's that's a different month. I also ended up picking up the drummer from Botsidarok, Nijika, for 6,150 yen, which I kind of understand why the price went up a little bit compared to the other figures, because you also get the drum set. At first I wasn't sure if you were to get the drum set or if that was an add-on bonus thing, but I'm glad it's included. She looks really cute here, and that just means there's one more figure or dendroid to complete the set. That's all we need, one more. Cyberpunk Edge Runners also got a little bit more love for me this year. I picked up the Rebecca Nendoroid for 5,500 yen roughly. Yeah, what can I say? Chaotic Lolly needed to be added to the collection. I do have the David and also the Lucy already, so it made sense to add her there. Even though she's, you know, like a light bulb, she's third wheeling, but good, good pickup, I think. And finally, moving over to some One Piece goodies, I also picked up the Mega House Lookup series Yamato and Gear 5 Luffy. Now these are incredibly affordable. I think they're like 3,600 yen roughly. Definitely competing with Nendoroids for that spot in the market. And I still think they're a great alternative, especially if the series and IP that you're collecting or you love doesn't get the Nendoroid treatment just because of licensing, this makes sense to me. Although I will have to say, I originally was planning to pick up every single Lookup series series One Piece figure, but I also saw the, the Kaido and Big Mom and those the, the, some of the ugliest things I've ever seen. It, it, yeah, it just doesn't work. They look really, really bad. Definite skip. That one's gonna tank, and I think if anyone does end up picking that one up, may, maybe just wait. To round out the month of March, I also picked up a very surprise re-release of a sitting on chair Portrait of Pirate Zoro. Now, this one has been on my radar for an incredibly long time. Not enough for me to want to put him on my grails list, but I've been secretly looking and seeing if I can get him for a decent price. Definitely could not get him for a decent price because the aftermarket was absolutely insane, almost rivaling the maximum in some cases. Some people were going crazy with the pricing here. Luckily, they did hear everyone's silent requests, pleas, prayers, and he's coming back for 2100 or 21,790 yen. April is going to be a much more chill month than March, and we've also grabbed the basis of Bochidarok, Ryu Yamada. Told you I had to finish the set, and with her, we've completely finished the set. I'm glad all the band members have been released in such short order, just because I've had a few figures basically have to wait months, if not years, to get other counterparts to kind of go along with them. So this is a very welcome sight. And to round off April, we're adding a much more chaotic character to the collection. That is the 1-7 scale Kotobukiya Starscream. It's the Bishoujo line. She's going to match up well with everyone else. So now we have two Decepticons and two Autobots, and she looks very, very playful. She has her jetpack on one side, so she's basically holding it like a shoulder bag. She does have that kind of schoolgirl outfit going on with a skirt, crop top, vest, and I think they did a good job. There's also a few recolors of this exact same mold, and I believe it's like slightly different for Thundercracker and um, I, I forget the other seeker's name, but also a good option. Picking things up in May, we also have a Takina from Aniplex coming in. This is going to be a little bit more on the more expensive side as well, coming in at 24,890 yen. So the exact same counterpart to the Chisato that we picked up, and she looks super cute. Has the pen to the cheek or her chin, and some books that she's holding on to. Again, Again, a little worried about the single foot, but it looks like there are two pegs or two metal rods that are in there. Hopefully she doesn't lean and yeah, we've completed another set. Continuing on with a little bit more talking I love, we also picked up the Good Smile Company version of her in the schoolgirl uniform. Now, this one's a little more different because she, she's holding a massive LMG. Now, this is how I dis decided to display my Nendroid of her, so this would be really cute to have all that together. And of course, she does match very well with the Chisato. And surprisingly, the price on this is very affordable, a little over 15,000 yen. If you needed a generic version of her, but you wanted to have a little more flair, I'd pick up this one over the 
the Aniplex one, but still good options either way. Continuing on with the completing sets theme, I also picked up a Bond Nendoroid as well. He looks really cute. It's my first ever animal Nendoroid, so I don't know how this is going to work out in terms of posability and everything. Also, I, uh, not too sure how we're going to change out the face. Maybe it's like the whole the whole head. I also ended up picking up a Ruby from Oshinoko. This is the Katie Cole version and she's wearing the B Komachi outfit. So the stage outfit and matches very well with Mama. So I, I wonder how this will turn out. It's a little bit darker than Ai's version and I'm a little on the fence whether or not I do want to get Arimakana's version but may maybe maybe I'll get all three. I'm, I'm, I don't know yet but the figure I'm most excited for for the month of May definitely has to be the re-release of Dawn and Piplup from Kotobukiya. I don't know how they're still able to produce figures for this price. This is only coming in a little over 10,000 yen. Yeah, I was not going to pay resale for her because people were trying to gouge for this. I've been really into Pokemon lately. Like I haven't been playing Scarlet and Violet too much, but I, I have been uh, I've, I've been going out and playing a lot of Pokemon Go. Maybe it has to do with that. I'm super excited for this. Hopefully they also re-release the, the green or is he blue? I, I forget what color he is now. Make it happen. Make, make it happen, Koto. This Still a lot of time left before the end of 2024 so i'm almost certain you can you can make a few more re-release announcements please it's like printing money like just just come on june's gonna be a much more quiet month with only one figure and that's another rem this is the egg version by fnex and she looks beautiful i ended up paying for this one like last year but for whatever reason they decided to postpone it they basically postponed it an entire year for whatever reason i don't know this is beautiful this is absolutely beautiful she looks precious here i i, I still don't know where i'm gonna put this it, too good and elegant to pass up. This is going to be one of my more expensive rims in the collection though, coming in at a little over 32,000 yen. But yeah, you gotta do it for the waifu. I got another one. Yeah, I think I only have two rems this year so far. Unless we randomly pick up other ones. And moving over to July, I have a few more Nendos coming in, two of which are from the same series. And those are the Frieden and Fern from the Frieden anime. They both have incredibly adorable facial expressions. And of course, I would love to get everyone else that they come out with. Another anime this past season that kind of took me by surprise was the Tear Moon Empire. So that means I also picked up the Nendoroid for Leah Luna Tier Moon for a little over 5,400 yen. And I'm happy to report we also get Guillotine Kun included in the package. Definitely a huge plus. I don't know if I would have picked her up without Guillotine Kun. I wouldn't be angry if they made a Nendoroid just of Guillotine Kun on the side. I definitely would have picked that up too. And for probably my most anticipated figure of 2024, I also went and picked up the Uta maximum portrait of hired figure. What can I say? I know a lot of people were clowning on this, saying that Uta does not deserve the maximum treatment, and I kind of understand where you're going from, but at the same time, the golden armor version of her looks amazing. Of course, you would have to be a very big One Piece fan to pick this up, because pricing is, you know, it's a maximum. It's a little steep. This one's 36,390 yen. But I think the colors look great on her. The pose looks good. And if there is one critique or gripe, it's the base. The base looks a little plain. I wish they kind of continued on with the musical notes and turned that into a base in, instead of just giving us a disc. But again, pricing is already really high. So I, I kind of want to give them a free pass here. As One Piece fan, I'm really happy to see Mega House kind of venture out of their comfort zone a little bit. They have been burned in the past by making movie specific Portrait of Pirates figures and for them to go for a maximum, I, I guess they just had a good feeling about this. So hopefully the sales for this go really, really well and we'll get more fun and creative characters like Uta in the future. And that's basically it. My pre-order list pretty much ends in July, nothing past that. And I think that kind of speaks to my philosophy for this year. We're going to try to pre-order less unless it's a really popular character or something that I know I can't miss out on. And we're going to try to snipe some sales and deals. Maybe something's been, maybe we'll grab it then. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. What is your most anticipated figure that you have on pre-order? And of course, if you enjoyed the video, give it a big old thumbs up. Let's go into 2024, guns blazing. And um, yeah. Maybe go watch another video on the side, you know, for the analytics and stuff. My name is Derek, and I will see you at the next video. Bye, guys.